So um, for today's class, we will be continuing with our watercolor medium. So everybody should get out their um, materials. You will need your watercolor, your brushes, preferably a thinner one, as well as a thicker one. And you will need a pencil to draw your sketch. Also, um, grab a little container of water that you can dip your brushes in. Would also be very helpful. You should also grab a palette or a piece of paper where you can mix your colors and test out your colors, as well as some paper towel to dry out your watercolor paper. I'll give everybody a second to collect these materials. Does everyone have everything they need? Okay, okay. Good. So for today's class, we will be drawing a, a sea creature. So, so far we've um, used watercolor to draw a landscape kind of scene. And we've also drawn some flowers so this time we will be draw drawing this. See, yes, we'll be drawing. So this is going to be our reference picture. If everybody has their phones, you can take a picture of this to set aside for reference. Okay, thank you. Okay, does everyone have, does, does anyone still need the picture? No, it's fine. Okay, so, so far um, with all of our lessons, we've, use pretty much the same method um, when adding details. So when you look at this, the surface of this jellyfish, you can see that it has a lot of lights and reflections. So when it comes to details that involves lighting, there is pretty much two methods um, when applying details, like the method of subtraction and addition. So, so far um, through the mediums that we've done, including graphite and charcoal, we've been able to use the subtraction method, which is basically when we start drawing the big picture first and then adding details later, either through erasing of the graphite to create these light details or just going through and darkening things. So we've been able to use that method. Also in our um, watercolor painting here, we basically used white acrylic paint to cover up some of the details and paint underneath in order to create 
the effect, the very the light effect. But this is by no means the uh, most ideal way to add these details because with watercolor, we're only able to ever get to a darker tone. It's not possible to use watercolor to create these light details afterwards. So when it comes to drawing with watercolor, you have to basically map out all of this de these details beforehand, before you even start to paint. So you're able to create these paintings using solely using your watercolor. So knowing this, we are going to take out our pencil and sketch out our jellyfish. So everyone should have their references in front of them. That would make things um, a lot easier. So like always, um, when we start, start to um, sketch, we want to start with bigger shapes. So we can separate the jellyfish into three basic parts. The top of it, the head, the round part, which we can sketch out by drawing a half circle. And since we are looking up at the jellyfish, we can see the underside of the jellyfish. So to show that, we will have to draw in the base of the head of the jellyfish, which is a round oval shape. So from the two corners, connect them using two round lines to create the underside of the jellyfish. So now you have the head of the jellyfish. We can go on to the next part, which is the center part of the jellyfish that comes down from its head. So we can try to trace the shapes as best as we can. So let's squiggly lines. And you can see two pretty distinct stems coming down. And then over here, they seem to merge into one. So we will bring that down. So you should have something like this. Now you have um, the general shape of the jellyfish mapped out. After this, you can start to draw in all of the little lines. So once you have this, you basically have all of the parts of the jellyfish down. And then we can go on to the details. For the details, we really want to be precise with the um, where we are drawing in the lights because we need to know where to leave blank, where we shouldn't paint so that at the end, they will still be blank, still be very light. 
which is the effect that you want. So when you look at the head of the jellyfish, you can see that um, it's separated into a bunch of little sections, all stemming from the top. You can bring it down, trying to follow the curvature of the jellyfish. So when you are looking at it, straight on, it will not look very slanted, but the more it goes around the jellyfish, the rounder these lines will get. This way, you can very easily mark the entire contour of the jellyfish just by using a few lines. You can see that these lines clearly follow the curvature of the jellyfish. Another easy way to look at this is that at the center, it will be straight. And the more you go out, the closer it will be, the closer it will get to the actual curve of the jellyfish. So here it is still fairly straight, but it's curving, curving towards the outside line. And here it's almost exactly the same as the outside curve. So it curves more and more like the outside curve as you go out. So now that we have this marked, we can draw in all of the all of the straights and curves along the edge of the uh, jellyfish. Also, if at any point in this class where you feel that I am going um, too fast, please, please tell me. So we can start from the edge facing us. Just observe the reference and draw these curved lines along the edge, but make sure they're not curving too far away from the line we already drew. So using that line as a guideline, draw these curves around the line we already have. So keep drawing in these curves. And also doing the same for the backside of the jellyfish. And this is what you should have. It almost looks like an umbrella. So once you have that, we can start drawing all of the curves all of, of on the edges of our of these two stems coming out of the octopus. I mean jellyfish, not octopus. So these ones are much smaller than the head of the jellyfish. So you can just draw smaller squiggly lines along the 
edge of the jellyfish Just try to follow your rough lines. And also looking at the reference picture. like that. So this is what everybody should have so far. It is still just in a rough sketch stage, so you don't have to worry about making everything perfect. So after you have this, we are getting to the most important parts. So what we want to do is make sure we block out all of the parts where there is light, where the light is hitting the jellyfish. So we're going to block them out just to tell us that we cannot use watercolor there. We need to leave it blank in order to create this light effect. So looking at your reference picture, or you can just follow me, we're going to first start for the head of the jellyfish. We can see a very clear line of light right across the top of it, top of the jellyfish in the two center panels of its head. So we can also following the curvature of the jellyfish, draw a Around a around kind of a uh, kind of curved line across here, so pretty uh, like um, two thirds of the way up, like just like that, and then halfway up from there, we can add the top line, and then this is the main light part of the jellyfish. And you can also see that there is a lot of streaks of lines coming down from the top of the jellyfish. We'll also draw these in, but also make sure to follow the curvature of the jellyfish. So by doing that, you can also use these bigger lines that you've drawn earlier as guidelines. So just Go from the top, always from the top here. Draw a line down. But also, we're going to draw another line that follows this line very close to it. So you can see that. You can see that these two lines are very close together, but they are only there to outline the streak of light that will be there once we start to paint. So this is the a kind kind of effect you want to do. It yes, it, it is very detailed, but it is the best way to achieve the addition detail process that we are trying to do. 
So I'm going to add another streak over here, with the same method, just outlining, outlining an area that will be left blank. So keep drawing in these light streaks that you see. This will provide provide guidelines for us later on. This is why uh, it would be very nice if you do have a thinner brush to brush so you can actually be very detailed and precise so you don't accidentally cover up these areas that are meant to be left blank. So I will just add the most prominent light streaks that I see. I will give everyone a second to make sure they have all of this down. So if you have these down, we can start on the lower end of our jellyfish here. So as you can see on the reference picture, there is a, a bright, a row of bright light along the lower edge of the jellyfish. So we will draw that by just following the outline we drew earlier, just drew, just draw basically the same thing above it, except this time not as harsh and not as curved. So like this. So we're following the edge, but not as much. So we'll keep doing this. So we know that we have to leave this area much brighter. And you can also see that inside of the jellyfish, there seems to be a ring of light. So we also want to show that just by starting here so like from the like from the middle halfway here so go halfway to the left from the middle and just draw a a curve around to the other side and this whole area will be left blank you can also erase anything that is currently in this area this will be a very bright point on our jellyfish. And the last details that we're going to be adding on our jellyfish is along the other side, the other edge of our jellyfish. So it would be the lower, the most, the lower, the lowest line, the lowest curve here. So if you look at your reference picture, there is light along the very, very edge of the jellyfish. So we will just draw in these pockets of light like this.
I know this everything looks um pretty messy, but this is why we're going to be doing uh, it in paint and pencil, so that once we start with the the actual watercolor part, it won't be too distracting. So just before I move on, I'm just going to take a take an eraser, take an eraser, and just lightly brush over the outlines that we've made. Just very lightly. We don't want to remove it. We just want to make it lighter, but still visible. So like this part, it is getting very dark. I'm just using my eraser lightly. Lightly erase it. Obviously not removing any of the details that we've created. So after that, um, we can start with the watercolor. So first, what you want to do is take a, a thicker brush and dip it in water. I will give everyone a second to catch up if needed. So you want to dip your brush in water. And then you can start brushing over with water, with only water, what you have with uh, over your jellyfish, just very lightly brush over it with water. This way, when the watercolor goes on, it will spread much easier. You can also go around the jellyfish as well. After you've done that, we can start mixing our colors. So I will be using the, I will be trying my best to mix the exact colors that are on the reference picture. So um, this drawing specifically uses a lot of blue. So there's blue and then there's also pink and orange. So like we learned last class, the reason why this jellyfish looks very, very bright, very saturated and colorful is that it has complementary colors within it, which is the blue and the orange, which both stands out very much against each other. And then with the pink highlights, which are very much analogous to our blue. It creates this harmonious look. So we definitely want to recreate that as best as we can. 
So again, complementary colors are colors that are on the opposite ends of each other on the color wheel. That would be the blue and the orange. And analogous colors are colors that are next to each other on the color wheel, which in this case would be the blue, the purple, and the pink. So first we want to start with the color that is most frequent on this jellyfish, which would be blue. So try to find a blue that would match the color the most. So I'm just taking my paper and trying different blues. If you have a regular light blue like mine, this will be very, really good. All you have to do is just take a little, little bit of red or pink and add it to the blue. This way, it will create this kind of purplish blue that we see most on this drawing. So a little bit of blue, no, um, a little bit of purple or red with our blue color. So as you can see, I have this purplish blue color. And once again, because um, because watercolor uses the addition method of adding details, it requires us to add layers after layers uh, to create the details. So to do this, we will have to start light. So we will have to first add a lot of water to our watercolor. So use um, the blue that you've mixed or the blue that you have and add a lot of water to your brush so that you create this watery wash that isn't too overpowering. So first we're going to start at the top of the jellyfish. So I'm just laying down my blue color, avoiding being very careful to avoid the outlines that we've made earlier. So make sure you don't color into the outlines that we made. Especially avoiding the main um, light streak that is on the jellyfish. That is the most important part to make this jellyfish appear bright and pop out in the dark sea. So just going around it. So leaving blank places where necessary. So while you're doing that, you can also look at the reference picture. You can see how the jellyfish it seem, appears to be darker in the center and gets lighter to the outside. So we definitely want to recreate that for this jellyfish. So make sure you can still see the distinct panels on the jellyfish that we've made or we made earlier. So we will go we are going to darken it individually. So this is what you should have so far. Just a layer of blue on the top of the jellyfish. So if you have that we're going to be mixing our next color, which is the bright 
fiery orange color that we see along the lower edge of the television. So mix your orange. And if you don't have orange, we know that red and yellow makes orange. Make sure you have a very watery color for this because the orange is quite bright. So we will not be getting any darker than this. This will basically be our final uh, layer of this orange. For the blue, however, there is still very much darker tones than what we have right now. So that will require more layers. So first, take your orange. So I'm using this reddish orange. So you can add some red to your orange if you feel that your orange doesn't look exactly like the reference picture. Always reference the reference picture. That is a very important thing when it comes to drawing and also learning how to draw. So we're going to take our orange and just fill in the lower edge of our jellyfish. Don't mix it in with the blue just yet. We will be using a separate color for that to create a nice gradient that we also did for our hummingbird last, last class. So this is what you should have. So right now we are only laying down our base colors. So hopefully everyone has this down. Just make it brighter. So after this, we are going to draw in the other side, the inner inner side of our jellyfish, which if you look at it, is a very, very dark purple blue color. So what you can do to mix this color is take your blue and your purple and mix them to create a bluish purple color. If you don't have purple, you can mix blue with red. And to darken it, you can add some black. So this is the color that I have so far. We are going to fill in the entire backside with this color, obviously avoiding the light areas that we marked out, including this big ring of light in the middle. So I will start by filling the inside part in. So just keeping in mind that it's darker towards the center and gets lighter towards the edge. So I will add more colors to the center to make it darker and leaving the outside as is. So this is one. You should have
So after you have this, you can also use this exact same color to add in the darker parts for the top part of our jellyfish. So if we observe, I feel like it would be easier if I just took out the reference. If we observe this jellyfish, we can see that it is very dark on the side. Since it is a curved surface, you can very clearly see the curvature by using the different shades. So you can see that towards the inside, it is darker, and towards the outside, it gets lighter for each of the separate panels on this jellyfish. So we will recreate that by mixing more of our dark purple-ish blue and just color in the side facing towards the middle of the jellyfish. Obviously, still avoiding the white lines that we created. And then we'll leave the other side blank. And then we'll do the same for the next panel. So having only the side facing the center, be darkened. Can repeat this for the other side of our jellyfish, but make sure to leave a little area like this in the middle, this gap. You can probably see it on the reference picture. Only leave a gap there. And keep drawing in only the side facing our facing the center is going to be darkened. Also make sure that your dark parts are also following the contour of our jellyfish. So as you can see that this part, the dark part is also curved to the shape of the jellyfish. This is very important um, for making believable and realistic drawings is to make sure you keep the form of an object no matter what. So I'll also be darkening the very last panel out here. If you don't have the exact same amount of panels on this jellyfish head, it, that's okay. Do it for how many uh, that you have, because all of our drawings are bound to look different, even if we're using the same reference picture. So again, make sure to always avoid the white lines, especially as you get darker and darker. Leaving these blank uh, areas blank while you add the darker tones is what um, gives the contrast, contrast that you see in the reference picture without the either of the dark, either of them, without either the dark or the light parts, you won't be able to have this effect. So darken, keep darkening the areas. Following the curvature of the jellyfish. So, still following the curvature with every brush. Also, it would be very helpful if you 
also brushed in the direction of everything. So instead of just brushing randomly, like horizontally, just make sure all of your brushes are following the direction. That will be the easiest way for us to, to keep track. So still following the direction with every brush. Following the curvature of our jellyfish. So I will give everyone a moment to complete this. But if you are done, just just take a look at your reference. You can see that at the parts where our orange and our blue meets, there is usually this pinkish, reddish pink color. So that's the next color that we'll be adding to our jellyfish. Make sure to always look at your reference picture just once in a while to make sure that you're on the right direction. For the pink color, if you have a color similar like mine, then you can just use it right away. But if you don't have that color, what you can do is by making pink using red and white, but also adding a little bit of blue. Teacher? Uh, yes, hello? Yeah, I want to ask, what, what color is mixed with the blue, uh, the uh, purple? Purple. Oh, the purple. Uh, the what purple? color mix than the purple? I, I don't have the purple color. Okay, so for purple, you can mix blue with red. Oh, blue and blue. Yes, blue and blue. red, but okay. yes. And for this, you want to use more blue than you use red. Okay, thank you. So just keep filling in the dark purple parts. And you can also notice that this is a, this is, um, you don't have to add this right now. This is just a, a way to make it more realistic and detailed is by drawing some separate streaks of the color to almost just give it texture. But this, this could basically just be classified as very, very final details. So just add it wherever you feel necessary by looking at the reference picture, of course. So I will be moving on to the, the pink color now. So again, this specific pink color requires red 
and white. So that makes, that is the most basic pink color you can mix. And for this one, it is a much more cooler pink. So we want to add a little bit of blue. So not too much blue. So again, it's red and white and a little bit of blue. So I will just be adding this color in between our bluish purple and our orange, just along the edge, because this is the color that occurs when they mix. So add it mostly in the in the center of in the middle of these panels. This is where this color appears most frequently. Just add it between the orange and the blue to create a gradient. Again, if at any point your paper gets too dark, if your um, paper gets too watery, just use your paper towel to wipe the excess water away. So it is quite a vibrant pink. So we're still going to continue to use this color, but if you if you would just look at your um, reference picture for a second, you can see that along the bottom part of the jellyfish, there is a very dark red color. Can everybody see that? So for that, we want to take our pink and add a little bit of red to it to create a much darker pink. And because we want to add very dark details, don't add too much water to your brush or else the color will spread and it won't look as dark and vibrant. So just, you can just trace, use this color to trace the, trace the pencil marks that you've already added before. Just trace it. Trace it to the best of your abilities. Since it is quite detailed, it would require a pretty thin and dry brush and if it gets too watery, just use your paper towels and wipe it. Again, trace it. Also, you can use this color to trace the the corners where the this parts where the our layers are meeting. So. Do your best to add these colors. <laughs> and keep adding it to the edge as well as the inside of our jellyfish. So I will add some pink at on the edges that we left lighter. Just brush in the pink. So again, I'm applying the pink 
color to the inside now, on the edge of the inside part, and just brushing it into the blue that we drew earlier. So again, if your watercolor looks too messy, that is completely fine. That is one of the appeals of watercolor drawing is that you can be very free with it and it will still have a very, very unique and cool effect. I'm just taking some blue and going back and darkening parts that I feel like should be darker. So this all comes down to your personal observations. You should always take the time to pause, look at your drawing, compare it to your reference picture, and just see what you're missing. Sometimes you may not feel like something's missing, but they are. This is just part of the process. I'm just continuing to mix these colors in together. So after this, the hardest part is definitely over. I will give everyone some time to catch up. Just make sure you have everything completed to a degree. Here, I am also just using water to just mix some of these colors together better because the jellyfish is quite soft. When you look at the jellyfish in terms of texture, it's very smooth and soft. So you want your colors to be like that too. So just mix your colors together as best as you can. So just by using water, just brushing over it with a with a little bit of water. You don't want too much or you'll drown your page and it will be not very fun to deal with. If you feel like your color is not dark enough, always you can always add black because our background for this picture is quite dark, very black. You can add black to this and it will look very accurate. Is anyone still working on the head or can we move on to the lower part of the octa I mean, the jellyfish? You can put your thumbs up if you would like to move on. I will give everyone some more time. So if you are 
at pretty much this stage. What you can do to increase the contrast even more is by darkening your dark parts, your dark areas. So keep adding layers of watercolor until it's dark enough. And the darker you get, the less water you should use for it to stick. So the lower part is fairly simple in comparison to our darker part, I mean, our um, higher part. This you can very easily just use a darker brush to brush. So um, the vein color of this is a very, very, very light pink. What you can do is add a lot of white to your red color so it looks very, very light pink. This could even use some more white. So it's like very, very soft pink color. Just keep adding white to your red and then you'll achieve this color. You want to use a lot of water this time and just softly brush all the way down, just very softly, including the areas that we just left. We left white earlier, just softly cover everything like this. You can use a lot of water to make it easier to spread. And you can see that on the reference picture, it's mostly this color, except for the, the edges, these squiggly lines. The edges are mostly blue and purple colors. So we can just go in with our brush and fill in these areas. So I'll first take my dark blue and just color in this area. So you should follow the reference. You should definitely follow the reference for this part. And I will keep adding blue to every part that is blue on the reference picture. So obviously don't make it really dark. The tail is very, very bright. So we want to keep it bright. So very lightly add a lot of water to your, to your watercolor so that it is very light. And also just keeping the paper towel on the side in case you accidentally add too much, and make it too dark. So everything's still very light. It's um, barely visible, even on the, even under the light. So this part is, it has a very, very soft, very soft colors that is being mixed together. So it would be nice to use a lot of water while painting so that every all of the colors just flow together, mix together nicely. So now I'm 
Moving on to the darker pink. If you don't know how to mix any of the colors, please ask me, but we have already mixed these colors for the head earlier. So hopefully everybody still remembers how to mix these colors. This is very, very, very watery. So now I'm adding some purple. These are all very light colors because I use a lot of water. So again, you don't have to be very precise. Just follow the general outlines and the reference picture that you see. But in the middle here, this part needs to be dark because this is empty. This is simply just a, a hollow space. That is the background. So just add all of the colors that you see together by looking at the reference picture. Like I also see some orange. So I also want to add some orange to this. So for this orange, it's a very reddish orange. So add red to your orange, but then in the end, still use a lot of water so it's very light color. If you don't have orange, it's again, just red and yellow. So here's the very reddish orange that I am applying. It is okay if you don't have any of these colors in the exact same position as the reference picture because every jellyfish is different and all of these colors look very nice and unified against each other. So it is, it won't affect anything at all if your colors were just in a little bit of a different order. So there's also some dark blue here. I am not, I am following the um, guidelines that I made earlier, but I'm also coloring outside of them because they are only just guidelines afterwards. So it is completely okay if you ignore the guidelines because we did them in pencil, they will not be that visible. So just basically keep adding colors on the outside edge and leaving the inside the same soft pink color. And and then you should have this effect. I'm also just darkening some parts, especially this um this edge as you can see on a reference picture, is quite dark. For the very dark areas, I am simply just adding black to my purple. So just a little black to your purple to create this very, very dark purple color for all of the dark parts. 
but everyone's colors are different. Yours may not need any more darks. So just all you can do is compare to the reference picture. So this is what I have so far. I'm also going to go in just with a thin brush, just re-outline everything, re-outline the squiggly lines like this so that it is still clearly visible. So just take your dark purple color, just re-outline it with watercolor. like this. Also going to be doing it for the inner edge, like this. So I'm adding some orange parts to this to make it more vibrant. Just adding it where you, just adding it um, by looking at the reference picture. It's very hard to just draw something from your mind, especially exotic animals, exotic creatures like the jellyfish that most of us don't get to see except from pictures. So if you're trying to draw something, it's always good to find a reference picture. So there's also some random squiggly lines down here that everyone should add. I am just observing the reference picture. So it's down here. It's just um, pretty random. It doesn't really have a pattern like most things you see in nature. So you can can really be really free with this. I'm just adding the 
finishing touches to my jellyfish. So I think for for mine, I will be stopping right here. I won't be working on the jellyfish anymore. So this is completely optional, just leaving your jellyfish as is on a blank page is perfectly fine. It would still look very, very nice. But when you look at the reference picture, you obviously see that the jellyfish is swimming in very dark water. So I really want to add that and to provide even further contrast by giving a dark background. This is optional. You do not have to do this step at all, but I will just show everyone what it would look like. So first, I'm just taking these little lines from the jellyfish and just making an outline because I will be I will be needing to leave it blank. So I'm just adding an outline to these lines. So I know what to, what to leave blank. So making sure that I do this for all of my jellyfish lines. I do not know what these are called. I would have to search up the technical terms later, but I'm just drawing them in like this. So after this, I will take my thick brush and add some black to purple to create a very dark, very, very dark tone. And I will be taking that and coloring around my jellyfish. So this is completely optional. You don't have to add it in just yet. But if you decide that if you decide that you would like to add this, you can always find this video on YouTube. Skip to the end so you can add this. I'm not going to fill the entire page. I'm simply just coloring, just only coloring around the jellyfish. So now that against, now that the jellyfish is against a black background, it's going to appear even more bright, even more realistic. because you now have that contrast bringing out the light parts on the jellyfish. So I will just continue to darken it. and then adding it 
also around the lower ends. But before I can color these lines in, I'll have to um, darken the lines that are visible over the jellyfish. So as you can see that these lines are also overlapping with the jellyfish. And these are much darker than the jellyfish. They're very dark put against the brightness of the jellyfish. So we can draw those in. I'm just using a very vibrant, dark red color with some pink. And just drawing those lines in like this. So for our everybody here, this would probably a la very last detail. So if you're not at this stage, it is completely fine. You can always add it in later. So I will Continue adding these in. So these are all of them, all of them I will add. I'm also going to color the ones outside of the jellyfish using the same color, but instead of standing out against a white background, it will be standing out against a black background. So I will continue the black around the jellyfish. So we are just about done class. Just note that this is, if you feel that you you want a challenge, you can add, try adding a black background, but it is by no means necessary. The drawing is complete with it can it is pretty much complete without this but for next class since we are since we have been doing watercolor for quite a while now we can continue 
with maybe one or two more watercolor classes, or we can switch um, the medium. So if you guys have a preference, you can tell me, or we can either move on to pen and ink, or we can revisit charcoal, which we only did one class of. So if you have a preference, you can unmute and let me know. So if anybody wants to show everybody their progress, now is your chance to do so. This was much longer. This did take much longer than I expected it would. So any progress that you guys have would be uh, would be lovely to see. That is very nice, Angela. Thank you. Yes. I was that is very nice. I don't like too much dark color, so that's why I didn't do the middle yet. I yes. was just wonder whether if I put it dark, it may make it worse. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> right now, it looks uh, very nice. The jellyfish looks very nice. I can very clearly see all your nice highlights. Mm -hmm. So um, if you don't want to continue adding the dark, that is completely fine. One, My one suggestion to you is only making the area around the jellyfish. Make this part. Okay as make, dark as you can, as just make dark, it completely yeah. pitch okay. black. Yeah. And then the top of your jellyfish will pop out and it would look very nice. Okay, I'm doing it right now. Yes, that is very impressive that you were able to do so much. But everyone else can also show me their drawings. Just know that even if you're not done, even if you still have a lot you need to do, that is completely fine. The, uh, the YouTube video will always be up here. That is very nice. Everyone can um, take a look. Make, make the picture, Tito. Oh, yes. You can also oh, make a okay. picture of Yeah, of I, left mine. I left in this. I'm very impressed with all of your progress. To those of you that showed me your your work, if you didn't show me, it is completely fine. You can always finish up your work by just observing the references yourself or going on to YouTube since our classes are limited. I do want to get through as much stuff as possible. So if everybody doesn't really have a preference, then I will choose our next medium. I put, uh, let's see, I put the dark color on it now. On oh, the The dark, adding the dark color was not expected of you guys. So really <laughs> nice of you to take on the challenge. That looks very nice. Ooh, <gasps> that looks amazing. Mm -hmm. Everyone did amazing today. So good job, everyone. 
you need to put really dark in between. Yeah. Eyes. Otherwise, it won't see too much. Yeah, Angela's exactly right. Right? So yeah. I have to put, yeah, one side I put very light, it don't distinguish out. The other yeah. side I put darker. Then yeah, you can you can very, very see, so, you can very, very yeah. yeah, much see the difference that makes. So. So our class is officially yes. over. <laughs> So everybody did very, very well today. Okay. Thank you, teacher. Thank you for joining me. This is this is very fun to draw. Mm -hmm. It's even more fun to see all of your progress, all of your work. So if you want, you can take a picture of mine. Yeah. And, and, and make the finished picture I draw it again. Yes, you can. Yes, you. This is very nice to do it again. Yeah, but I make the put put a uh, purple color is difficult to make. Yeah, yeah. Colors are are very are very difficult to um get a hang of, especially if you don't yeah. have a big variety. So my suggestion is you can always go online, go onto Google or YouTube, and okay. search search up. Maybe mm. search up um how to make these colors. I'm sure there are very detailed guides, much better than I can explain for mixing these colors. Mm. Okay. So that would be useful. Mm. So everyone did very well today. Next class we will be moving on to a different medium. Um, since um, most of you didn't really enjoy charcoal, charcoal was quite messy to work with, I think we will be moving on to pen, pen drawings next time. Mm. I think pen is a very, very versatile okay. medium that could be used in a lot of different ways. I hope you will all join that class next week. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Okay, thank bye you bye. so much. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone.